Welcome back, YouTube. We're gonna start the actual mission now. So you and me were just having a discussion oh off camera. Oh my gosh. What, what are your thoughts on loot boxes? Briefing. I don't like them. All right, why don't you like them, though? So I watch a lot of Jim Sterling. All right. And I know people are very divisive on their opinions of him, and that's very fine. People are entitled to their opinions. Mm -hmm. But the general consensus that I have is up until pretty recently, and I've kind of, I'm kind of back and forth on it, is I don't like loot boxes for the most part. And we discussed it a little bit off camera just now, and I was like, we should probably record this because it's actually a very interesting conversation. It's actually I'm, a really solid philosophical conversation when it comes to the gaming world. We're front-loading a lot, so bear with me as we just run in headlong to to a heavy conversation. Right. Um, oh, Nico, you optimistic little shit. <laughs> sure. Stay out of my way. All right, then. Stay out of my way. I'm going to make you a deal you can refuse. Are all three of these characters scouts? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, but it was like, okay, let's t let's take an example of something like really egregious and ridiculous, and that's like Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call it's of the Duty same has... game, sk reskinned, and it's basically a sports game. Oh, oh in that uh, in that regard. Basically a sports game, and the problem is they re they rehashed the same game Don't and kill. market it. To the same audience time and time again. It's yes. awful. That's a tank. There you are. And like, there you the, are. like and the the thing that gets me is like when you think about something like the like the worst offenders when it comes to loot boxes because there's a, like a sliding scale I think where it's like the right. first one you have that's oh, really oh. bad is you have something where you have to pay up front. It gives you some of the content for the game and then the rest of it goes all right now buy loot boxes, or you are heavily encouraged to buy loot boxes. The biggest offender, obviously, is like the EA Battlefront situation, where you buy the game, and then it goes, now buy loot boxes because the game is almost completely unplayable in a fair in a fair standing until you spend money on it again. Right. It's the very standard pay-to-win mentality is applied there. Right, and it's awful every time. It's awful every time. Uh, the net, the, like, that's, that's the worst offender, in my opinion, is stuff like that. Um, there's a really good video on it. I think we, I think we talked about this sometime in the past, probably like 50 episodes ago or some shit. Something like that. Um, where this guy does a giant, giant breakdown. I can't remember the guy's name, and I'm really sorry about it. Um, the name of the channel and stuff. Where he brings up the sli again the sliding scale of loot boxes and their like okay levels of okayness. Motherfucker. And generally, I would say that loot boxes aren't okay in any regard. In any shape, where form. With one exception don't get in my way. of, like, paying for content after you've got the game. And that is basically just Warframe. And that's because you can still get every ounce of content out of that game by just playing it. By now, just playing the damn game. There's a ratio there where it's like, okay, how much of the game do you need to play before that becomes warranted? And I'm sorry if I'm jumping all over the place. As I talk about this, it's a right. Very, well, but it's, like, a, it's a valid, it's a valid thing. It's like super duper valid, and it's real. It's a real thing for the gaming industry. Yeah. Um. But it, it goes into talking about like how do we handle to, um something like then the next example that I brought up uh, before we started recording again was Overwatch, where it's like you bought the game, and loot boxes are in it, and they are encouraged to be purchased. However. That you don't need to buy them. Now that wasn't the case. If you remember, all the way back to the very beginning of the game, right? You could not buy skins there with were, currency. There was no such thing as so buying it. You had to. You had. If you wanted skins, you had to buy boxes and hope that they were in there. And then people and went, hope that they were tasteful. And, and especially the the worst one was the summer games, the very first one, right? Where it was you have to buy boxes. You can't use currency to buy those those special skins, right? And people went, that's fucked up, you need to fix it. And they immediately backpedaled and went, you're right, okay, when you say it like that and make it look this bad, we'll fix it. Right. Because spoilers, bad press is bad press. And Straight up. Oh, Nico. Nico, Nico, me. Oh, nice. I'll take it. And it, it puts it in this really sort of odd position of like, no, the, the content's not required. What happens if we lose the point? I don't know. Is it? Did it have a star on it? Fuck. 
Maybe. Maybe we need to restart this and oh, reapproach. Oh, it's fine. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to uh, re re-examine our our. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but it's like the, they are completely cosmetic boxes in Overwatch, and, and that ge generally that's sort of passable. And I I generally don't have too big of an issue with it, but we tr like it, it it puts this weird sort of sort of it, spot it, we where enter this kind of stigma where it's like uh, where they go you don't have to buy them but you are encouraged to buy them at any opportunity at Anytime. every opportunity yeah some might say like it, it's the discount system that's fine uh, i guess I well there's actually now that we got rosetta here may as well just hold the point yep no, never mind. Um, but it puts this really like interesting. It puts you in this interesting space where it's like, yeah, but the, this stuff could just be unlocked. And I understand the mentality of yes, but we. It makes me think about the payday thing where they tried to do the selling keys and weapons and stuff like I that. I remember that. And it was. I a huge remember. It. Lots of people were like super duper disgruntled about I it. I was. I was one of the few people who, at the time, I did defend it because I was like. It does give an advantage to the game when you have this stuff right. introduced, but because it was initially it was initially thrown down as um, it was initially marketed uh, pandering specifically towards cosmetics. Just but they, get in my but way. they, but then they added stats to it, stuff that had stats on it. And I did buy some because I have bad right. impulse control and I like video games and stuff. And Franz and me got into it where he was like, they shouldn't be in the game, it's fucked up, and I don't like it, and I went, I do understand. Tell me more about your problems. <laughs> and I was like, I do understand where you're coming from, but I used the, what I felt was a, at the time was a valid defense of, they have to pay the employees somehow. This is also and it's true. An, and it's an old game. Old, at the time, this was an old, wow, that's a good skill. Full HP recovery. I guess oh my you God. just made it into the roster. <laughs> Godwin's back. Um... But it and I was like, but you need to pay your employees somehow. But it's it all and the way that the Steam market w is set is that you only get a small mar the developers and, the, and stuff only get a small amount of the money that, that's way too far, uh, a small amount of the money that that the game makes on Steam back to the company because Steam makes so much in terms of storefront profit, which is in True. itself very difficult to handle and you know talk about because it's so complicated. Right, but. I don't have hard numbers, obviously. We're talking off the cuff, but it, like, it. That's one of the ones where it's like, when people were like, it gives you bonuses for like, it hard numbers increase when you use these these things that can yeah. only be gotten by spending by money. spending money. And it's like, well, I understand that the game is PVE. And that was that was the other defense I used was the game is PVE. If you were getting benefits like over another player that it was against you, then I'd have a problem. But then it still was presented. But then the boxes themselves were still presented in this way where it's like, hey man, maybe you should uh, handle all that cash over so we can give you this thing. And it's like, right. why and don't you just so give us skeezy. And it's like, why don't you just give us a, w uh, a way to unlock it without having to spend more money? And right. it's this really horrible sort of predatory mindset that companies have where they go. But just we want your money, though. There's a really excellent quote from uh, from Todd Howard of Bethesda. Where right. He was like, "We made Skyrim ten years ago, and if someone buys that game, we have no further direct interactions right. with people who picked up that game beyond their initial purchase." Oh, and, ow. And that's corporate talk for we can't like once you buy the game, you own it, and we can't make more money off of it. Right. And that's why Fallout 76 started to happen, and they were like, that has microtransactions and stuff in it, and that has, I don't think it has loot boxes per se, but it has a storefront and microtransactions and, and stuff that gives you intrinsic in-game benefits, which they also said wasn't going to be in it. And it creates this really sort of horrible, there's no grass in this game. There, there's it, no grass in this game. This yeah. Re, this it, really, it presents this really skeezy approach where it's like, what do you want us to do about it then? There's a great example of this in a slightly different context with the game we just did a so I bought on uh, at the time of this going out would be last week if I'm not mistaken maybe um, where there's a there is a storefront in the game but there's no incur there's no way to spend real money on it because it's all based on your in-game currency 
However, it's built like the like the Fortnite store, where it goes, you got until the end of the day, you got like eight hours until all this stuff cycles out. You don't know when it's going to be back. And it's like, motherfucker, just put it in the game. Oh, shit. Just let us play it. Right. And right now they're doing the Grand Prix, which is the special event where you can, I think it'll be over by now and when this video goes out, mm -hmm. where it's, you have to play the game and do certain events and certain, uh, certain, uh, like, online stuff or offline stuff if you don't want to uh, shill out for the online uh, connectivity for online matches that says, uh, that says, hey, if you can do this, you'll get huge bonuses to your, uh, your event currency, basically. Right. And the event currency can only be gotten, you know, so much every day based on certain stuff or whatever. And the best stuff is unlocked by playing every single day. And then, like, the best example is the first four days they went every day a new character from this special event is available. Mm -hmm. But they cost 1,500, 1500 currency. Which right. Is, which isn't unreasonable. That's, that's playing for, like, two hours or so on average. Right. If, if you're winning and, you know, doing good. Right. And then, like, stood, today or yesterday, at the time of this recording, all four characters went on, went up as a bundle of currency mm -hmm. for the price of two and a half characters. Gross. And I went, what, and I literally looked at it and went, what the fuck is this? Right. And it's, like, no other money is being exchanged, it's all in-game currency, but it's the exact same tactic where it's like, right. why did I, there, why there did a... I waste my time spending all this extra in-game currency right. when I could have just gone ahead and waited for this thing to pop up? If you'd given, if if the storefront never changed and it said, it's like, what's up? I was just looking at the the timer. Uh, no, at the track. Oh, wonder if this is another Stein's gate. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I may not know exactly how to help you, but if you feel even a little. Better, well, it raises a really good good right. point that. Uh, there was a really big business conference, and like it was titled "Check Your Morals at the Door." Yes, I watched it, and I'm grossed and, like, out. It's disgusting. Sure. Wherein they're literally pur like the better. whole idea is l is absolute cynicism. They're they're approaching it. They're approaching they're approaching the whole business industry, at least from video gaming, understanding that their constituents are people with money to spend. Yes. And they're treating them exactly as that, as cash cows. And that's the fucked up part, because it's like, where whatever happened to releasing a game and then deciding on a, ti deciding on a title, wherein they... Uh, R rather releasing a single game saying once you buy this it is yours all of the content but at the same time um, if there's a major update and overhaul um, if the game sales uh, like I understand like it, it really does call into question like DLC for example yeah because if you buy the game it's yours at least in theory, that's how in a per in, in a more perfect world I would see it being. Which is why, which is why when the Skyrim devs, uh, which is why when Bethesda said, "We've washed our hands of Skyrim," but it's not making a, we can't make more money on it unless we keep re-releasing it. I think people don't want us to do because right. the game's ten years old. Because or whatever. they're not EA. Of course, you'd need to study up. Surprise mechanics. Method. Did you hear about that? What? So the so EA went up to bat against Congress, the American Whoa. government, trying to explain how their how their Battlefront uh, loot boxes weren't microtransactions that were bad, and how it wasn't gambling. Right. And the woman who went up to bat went, "It's not. Like it's not uh, gambling. We've it's a lo uh, the loot boxes aren't gambling. They're but totally ethical and moral. Those were her Wait, almost exact words." It's a surprise mechanic. It's like opening a Kinder Surprise egg. All, you buy the thing and get a little bit inside. But that's gambling for children. That's literally like buy buying lotto tickets. It is very similar, yes. Which the lotto, I'm sorry, is a tax on, on people who can't do math. It's very statistically unlikely you'll ever make money on the lottery, and if you do, it's usually not it's more usually, than you spent in the first right. place. Like, to break even on lotto tickets is, like, the bare minimum. And even then, like, the odds of that are slim. A great example when it talks slimmer than actually, like, them having your walking away with your money. What, what was the example that someone used? It was a statistician said you're more likely to meet a random person at an airport, uh, t uh, get on a random plane, fly to a random place, get off, and see the same person at the, the airport you landed at than you are to win the lottery. Right. That's nuts. You're more likely to roll six D20s in a row with a nat 20 
rolling a nat 20 on every one, you are more likely to roll six natural 20s in a row than winning a lottery. Yes. Um, but what I was going to say in terms of like gaming and stuff is a great example is if you look at the expansion from Diablo 2 and Diablo mm -hmm. 3. Yeah. Diablo 2 by itself is a, is a fantastic... We should play Diablo 2. We should. That's uh, what we should do for, for Halloween. Maybe. Diablo 2 by itself is a fantastic, albeit because of the time that it came out, a little bit simplistic game. Right. The expansion the expansion is fantastic. Godwin got appraisal. Sweet. A friend's wish. And saintly smile. I thought it said sanity smile. I was like, so did I for a second. I needed to check my check myself before I wrecked myself. I was like, what do you mean by that shit? Um, but then you go, but then you look at the comparison of Diablo three, a game that came out. You remember when that game came out and it had an mm -hmm. in-game auction house where you could make real money and play the auction yes. house for a job in real life. I remember this. And it almost destroyed the game when it yeah. came out. Because at that point, it just became the stock market. And they had to shut it down because it was destroying the game and the community around it. Right. And the game already was launching with rough with a rough start because they changed the aesthetic to be more cartoonish and less right. dark and quote-unquote semi-realistic compared to Diablo 2. Now, the original Diablo 3 like core game is like, I think it's like six chapters and so or something like that. Right. And has a, a myriad of levels and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. And then the expansion oh, pack adds like Here, one chapter, and it's like it was like thirty what? or forty dollars on launch. Mm -hmm. That insist. now I'm not a mathematician by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't qualify myself near smart enough. But the the money is not there, uh, right? Uh, in terms of it's how the business model just walk. doesn't support it. Because like if you're if you're doing. 20% right. of the content of the original but paying 70% of what it was of what the original contents worth the numbers ahead. don't add up there but something's wrong something's genuinely askew and that's where like really weird course, transactional stuff gets complicated there's a huge of sort of like slide campaign against uh, uh, against oh, single player games right team. now right. from big companies like EA Soft and stuff yes. like that Right, and because, Ubisoft is another really bad one. Right, uh, the problem is they're not making that kind of money back on single player games, and that's the and that's and the that's thing. the messed up part because Where, single player games are amazing. When you look at what was the, there were two examples that people were like, single player games are garbage and they and they, and they're dying and nobody likes them, which is propaganda because it's not true. It's not true. It's misinformation. I'll play single player games over multiplayer any day. Every any day. Every and any day. Look, literally the channel. Right. <laughs> um. But it was like, what was the one of the number one games of twenty of 2017, 2018? Mm -hmm. Spider-Man. That game okay. had an expansion. Yeah. And it was it wasn't expensive, it was like 15, 20 bucks. And it was three separate, albeit slightly smaller, campaigns that were all good. I played that game to completion on my own on the channel. You go back and watch it. I think it's really fantastic. I'm not plugging, I'm just plugging. But like it's a single player game and it was my game of the year. Right. I, like it, single player games do fine on their own. Right. And for some reason, I know why. It's because they want they want to discourage people from from playing them and buying them. It's there's this mentality of single player games do badly. That they're not Perhaps worth it. The that they they are poisonous to the community of video games. And it's not it's not true. It is is it's ridiculous to assume that. Remember, don't spend money. We're trying to save up for that thing. I know, I know. You just gotta look in window shop. I'm just trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to fill the screen while while you ran. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because we are reaching Stein's Gate. It's getting there. Um. I'm pretty much done on the subject because th this is something that could spiral a lot of control, and we could go on for like an hour. Right. But it's like the long and short of what I'm getting at is that right now the state of video game like ethics air quotes is like. It's really bad. I it's really not in a good spot. Back in back when the original when the 360 was transitioning to the Xbox One and stuff, uh -huh. I was talking to a coworker and he was asking me, "What's your opinion on you know video games and stuff like that?" And I said, "I don't trust tri uh, AAA companies. I don't." I do, uh, Witcher 3 was another great example of a single player game that had a bunch of expansion stuff that came out, was decently priced, and the content was fantastic. It was right. it was insanely good. CD Projekt Red, although they work their their uh, 
their workforce to literally having like panic attacks and stress, you know, stress attacks. Working and stuff. their working their their crew into the ground. Crunch time to the point where people are having you know mental breakdowns. But we're not going to get into that right now. Right. Um. I lost my train of thought. Help me. Oh God. CD Project Red. Witcher 3. Don't forget to like, comment, God damn subscribe. It. <laughs> Follow us on our social media, i.e. Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. There you and go. Eh. Do the thing when the points. Join us again for another exciting rant. About something, I'm about sure. About something. I'm, I, we're, we are positive. Later, folks. <laughs> <laughs>